hello if you are watching. Get over to my other screen here. up here. <clears throat> there, somebody. Good morning, Lily. Good to see you. I feel like it's been weeks and weeks since we've all been together. How are you doing? Doing good? Good. Wonderful. I'm going to pull up my notes here quick while we wait for everybody else to get into class. Let's see. Where did it go? <clears throat> um, oh, there it is. So we are going to be studying Georgia O'Keeffe and one of our more modern artists that we've studied. And let's see. Um, she liked to paint really big flowers, really big. And she also liked to paint cityscapes like um, when she lived in New York City she painted the skyscrapers um, it's kind of interesting and then she also lived in um, New Mexico not too too far from here and she painted lots of um, landscapes of the desert and of animal bones how interesting is that so oh where is everybody well, I guess they can always just hop in here. <laughs> what is that? Um, her mini, it's oh. a toy pie. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, my... oh, pretty. What's her name? Uh, Pinky. Oh, oh, that's really pretty. Yeah, I don't think I have to collect them. I have all of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Let's see. Make sure my sound is all the way up. This one. I think my sound is up. Let me look down here. Yep, my sound is up. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the others are going to be in here. Everybody picked up their pink kits. So, um, so yeah, Georgia O'Keeffe is this month for April. And then next month, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Instead of drawing, we're, we're going to go, we're gonna go camping soon. You're going to go camping. Oh, wow. How exciting. It's two more days. Two I'm more days. I'm camping with my grandma and grandpa and my dog. Nice. Hey, welcome, Zach, and how are ya? Yeah, I haven't been camping in years, literally, oh my gosh, maybe eight years, nine years. Hey, bud, good to have you here. So we were just talking about um, Georgia O'Keeffe. She's a pretty modern artist um, that we're going to study for April. And she's probably one of the more modern artists that we've studied yet. Usually the other ones lived back in like the, oh gosh, 1700s, 1800s. Hey, Kian. Hi there. And um, Georgia O'Keeffe lived in, um, let's see, she was born in 1887 and she, died in 1986. So she lived 98 years. How amazing is that? 
She lived almost a hundred years. So she saw so much in her lifetime. Um, she did end up losing her eyesight. Oh gosh, I think the last 12 years of her life, um, she had macular degeneration, which is um, an eye disease. So she did not give up painting even though she couldn't see, she hired assistants to help her and she painted from memory instead of what a lot of artists do is paint um, what they see. Um, if we call, if we paint out in nature, we call it painting in plain air. And um, she painted from memory her last 12 to 15 years of her life. So she kept it going. Um, that's wonderful. I am going to make sure the Adams girls are getting on here. Let me see, because I think their mom is working. So <laughs> they, their mom might need to remind them. Let's see. Um, girls coming to class. Um, in fact, if you guys, while we're waiting for a couple more students, if you want to go get either crayons or color pencils or markers. We're going to use some of those today too. So go ahead and find some colored and not paint, but some um, colored things to use for our drawing class today. Okay. The purple bag. All right. All right. She's got that. <clears throat> so <laughs> good morning. So we are, um, so we're studying Georgia O'Keeffe this month. Next month, we're going to switch it up. I started to say instead of drawing class, um, next month, we're going to study Alexander Calder. I have seen one of his, he's a sculptor and a painter, and I've seen one of his massive sculptures when I lived in Michigan. And he has a huge red one. I'll show you a picture of that next month, um, but it's a huge, huge um, red one metal that is in the downtown city that I used to live near. And it's just, it's huge. And, um, so we're going to make a sculpture, a mobile next month instead of drawing class. And we'll be putting, I'll give you all the items that you need to make it. We will assemble that in class. And then the second class, we will do a painting um, similar to what he makes. So that'll be kind of fun, something a little bit different. Um, today though, we will, do you remember when we, um, we painted, a still life looking at some items in front of us and then we moved one of those items under the table and we painted just kind of from memory do you remember that or no we didn't move the item we moved our paper and we drew what we're looking at we drew under the table remember when we did that a couple months ago we're going to do that again today i know that was fun and um we didn't, we ran out of time last month, but we're going to do that again. So do you have, does everybody have their journals out? Your drawing journals ready? Get your drawing journals out. Perfect. Zach and Kim have theirs. Good job, Lily. So I'm just going to use a plain piece of paper here because I know it's easier to see when I draw a little bit bigger here. And I think I'm going to turn my other light on. There's a little more light on the subject. Yep, you got it, Lily. And my fine Sharpie. All right, should be. <laughs> All right, I hope this is close enough for you all to see. So we're going to. Um, do you have uh, like three things that we can look at that's on your table right now? Grab three things that are nearby that you can draw. Just three. Lily, you have that doll. You can draw that. Oh, yeah. 
Yep, that's good. Um, that's kind of hard. It, it might be a little bit hard, but I, I'm sure you can get that shape. I'm sure you can draw her shape. Easily. She has a folder. You have a book. That's perfect. That's a good shape. Yep. Yep, and you got all that. Perfect. Good job. All right. So I am going to something different. I have a stapler. <laughs> That's something different, huh? I'm going to put it sideways so you can see. I am going to also draw something a little different. <gasps> Some a bowl of cactus and stones. Let's see. Cactus. Some succulents I bought in um Joshua Tree. I'm scared of cactus. Are you scared? One of these that scares me because you can't even tell up close but it has these little tiny hooks that you barely touch it and it sticks on you. <laughs> I was trying to move them around with my fingers and I found I can't because it'll grab me. So I have to use like a pen or pencil, but oh gosh, and they're <sighs> actually growing some roots. These two are cool. It's scary. <gasps> that little guy. Ooh, what is that cute. little character? Oh, a dinosaur? <laughs> cute, very cute, that's perfect. So I've got my bowl of cactus. I've got a stapler and I got um, a fairy, my water bowl and water bowl. perfect. I think I will grab. Hmm. What am I seeing? I've got a different shape. This is my retainer holder, <laughs> but it's like half a moon. It's kind of a half moon shape. Where's my camera? But it opens up. So that will be a little bit harder, huh? I'm gonna try it. So let's do a little practicing. We haven't drawn in a long time. So let's do a little practice drawing and we'll talk a little bit more about Miss Georgia O'Keefe. And then we're gonna do the drawing under the table, okay? Oh, you got something else. Ooh, that's tiny. Oh, is that a crystal or from a geode? Oh yeah, I think those are so cool. I have three, if I can find them at the end of class. Oh, you've got another one. If I can find my three at the end of class, I'll show you, okay? I've got a purple amethyst too. All righty, let's get started. So I'm gonna assemble my stuff like that. I'll put it a little bit on the screen so you can see. I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing as well. And I'm just kind of, if you have them all together, draw them all together okay don't really make them in separate places draw them like you see them all put together like this we call that a still life do you remember that so i'm going to start with i'm kind of looking at mine at an angle here so i'm gonna start with my bowl my bowl is round. I know Lily has a round cylinder shaped water bottle. And I know Zach and Kian have some um, crystals or stones, a dinosaur. So you have some different shapes going. So do your best and just look at the shape and draw. Okay. I'm starting out with my bowl of my cactus. I can see mostly the top edge here. And a little bit of the side. So I'm going to create the side. It's just a bowl shape. So it has kind of a flat bottom, but it's kind of rounded. Can you see that okay? I think you can. Almost looks like a hamburger. <laughs> looks like a hamburger bun. All right, so I've got some cactus with some pokey stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to do the big cactus first. It's kind of bumpy, I see, but it also has those little prickers. And those would be similar to like the pine needles on a pine tree, but pine needles, they can be sharp. I don't know if you guys have ever seen pine needles. They are pretty sharp. So my little pokey things on this guy here, 
it almost looks like a starburst. It's almost, they're like flower shaped. So I'm gonna make lots of little flower shapes. I'll pull it up close like that. And if you're catching the recording, just get your little still life of three objects and draw with us. Draw what you see and just do your best. That's all I ask. And I hope you guys are able to show your teacher, your homeschool teacher, what you're doing in art class. Because you do get credit for enrichment classes. So I'm just doing these little pokey things all over for this cactus, this little guy. I always call them my little guys, my cactus. I have a bunch of succulents out my window. I don't, you can't see out my window, but on my window here, I've got um, a patio with lots of succulents that I've collected over the years. I love succulents. They're almost the only plant I can keep alive. <laughs> They're a lot easier for me to take care of. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little cactus in here. So I'm just kind of making the shape. Let me know when you're about done. And we're just going to kind of go along. Make sure you get all three of your objects drawn right together as a little set. I'm making these guys. I've got, there's one, two, three different kinds of succulents I have here. Like I said, I think one, two, three, four of them are, have that weird pokey thing that grabs you and does not feel great to take it off. And let's see. When I went away on spring break last week, I watered them really well beforehand and three of them have long roots. I wasn't sure that they would grow roots. I bought them, oh God, about a month, over a month ago. Um, that one. I was surprised to see them growing roots. Let's see, I got a few more over here. They're kind of lumpy shaped with lots of pokey things. And then I've got lots of rocks. It's kind of a little rock succulent garden. So I'm just going to draw lots of different shaped rocks with some sand. This is a lot of details for a quick drawing, but I think it's interesting anyways. But lots of rocks. And we don't need to color these ones yet. This is just our drawing practice today. But in a little bit, I'll have some exercises. Since we're going to paint the flower, you probably saw your canvas and the picture that I sent to be uh, glued or taped onto the card. That picture of the red flower, that poppy. Um, I will, in fact, I will write the words on here, the name of that painting that we will be doing next time. Um, I'll just write it right on my paper here so you guys can either copy it or your parents can see it and um, you can put it on your note card so you remember who the artist was and what the name of the painting was. And you can show your teacher what you learned as well. All right, lots of little stones. I've got like some sand and some like gravelly stones in here. So there's my pot. I've got some grooves on the bottom part down here. Now I'm gonna make my stapler. I have it laying down. That's a different angle than we normally see a stapler. So it makes it a little, it's different to look at. It looks a lot different. So it's connected right here. I think it has that part coming down. I'm gonna bring this over here. And when you're all done, let me know and we will show everybody. There's my stapler. It has a 
round thing on the bottom. And my retainer holder, that's that silly shape. So part of it is behind here. And kind of sits at an angle behind my cactus. And it's rounded like that. It does have a groove. I'll make that groove. Because it's kind of a box, so it has depth. It's not just flat. It has to fit my silly retainers inside. Okay. How's everybody come? Oh, Zach Sky is up. Good. Haha, <laughs> that's that dinosaur. All right, then. You're done? Okay. Go ahead and show me. Nice, Kian. Oh, good, Lily. Oh, you did a great job of your doll. My you fairy. Your fairy. And the bottle and the eraser. Yep. Very good. Good, good, good. All right. And don't forget to be practicing drawing in your journals, okay? That's what those are for. Not only for class, but on your own time to do practice. When we practice a lot of drawing, we get better and better and better. All right, let's take one of those objects. I think I'm gonna take my stapler. Take one of your objects and put it in front of you. Now, if you wanna use your next page on your journal, you can, I'm just gonna fold it over. Put your paper under the table with your drawing pencil and not looking at the paper, remember this? Not looking at the paper, we look Let's at the object. Draw it. Oh. Yep, draw it, all right? I'm just gonna do one, I'm just gonna do one. Yes, just one thing at a time, that'll be easy. Uh, I'm gonna use this, okay. You can do that one, there we are, good. All right, Zach, what are you gonna draw? Zach and Keen, what are you guys gonna draw under the table? That one, okay, good. Oh, a timer, oh yeah, those are fun. No, is this good? Yep. Yep. Good. You got it. Kian, what are you going to draw under the table? You find something cool? Just one of the things that you already drew. Oh, a star. Is that like a squishy ball? A squishy star? Looks like it. Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. Draw that. So you put that on your table, put your paper under your table and start drawing that. And let's see what we come up with. This will be interesting. We're gonna take turns drawing things. So let's see, I'm drawing my stapler, not looking at anything but the stapler. And I already feel like it's funny looking. Okay, I'm already done. You're done? Wow, you are so fast, Lily. Very good, good job. All right, oh, I've that's got- That's a little sorry. You got your star, very good. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it still has the five points. I'm kind of worried about my stapler. I think it's gonna look really weird. All right, let's see what I came up with. Well, that doesn't look like a stapler. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to do. All right, take another item that you already drew and just look at that one item and let's draw that under the, under the table, okay? So I'm gonna do my retainer box. All right, let's try another one. Let's see. At this angle, I can't see the top real well. This is a hard exercise. Very good. Oh, good. Was that the crystal? Good. Oh, that's right. That was your timer. Yeah, it's hard, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, there's my retainer box. I don't know. I kind of got sort of the shape down. Weird. Looks like something I did in first grade a long time ago. <laughs> Okay, let's draw your third item. Oh, good job, Kian. Yep, you got it. Good, Lily. Yeah, see? 
See, you guys can do this. All right, now I'm going to draw my little cactus stone garden. All right, under the table it goes. All right, it's round. Oh, good. Oh, that was quick. Can you? Can you? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's one of the other kids. Oh, where'd they go? Oh, gosh. Sorry. The dog's going crazy. Oh, one of the other kids was just here and now they hopped off. I'll watch for them. All right, I'm still drawing. Whoops, I lost my place. I'm still drawing my little cactus. I've got the top view here with the pokey things. I've got two others and lots of stones. Okay, this is going to be really interesting. I'm almost done. I'm putting the stones in. This is going to look really weird. All right. Well, there's my cactus rock garden. <laughs> it looks like I spilled the rocks, huh? <laughs> the rocks are all <coughs> the rocks are all over the table. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> well, shoot, where did they go? Marisa's kids were getting in. Tino and um, Rosalie. Very good, Kian. Yeah. So if you guys practice this at home, you will get better and better. Um, it's just kind of uh, something that you're, it's an eye-hand coordination that takes a lot of practice. Um, I mean, it's hard enough drawing things right here on the table, but when you move your drawing to under the table and you can't see, it takes a lot more practice with your brain, that right side of your brain. So, all right. Um, well, hopefully those kids will get back into class here. All right, I'm gonna move my cactus over. And a couple other things we're going to draw. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to show you quick some paintings that Georgia O'Keeffe made. I saved them here on my laptop. And um, let's see, a few things. While well, I've got my notes up here. Oh, you've got your stuffed guy. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> So um, real quick here, Georgia O'Keeffe started painting as a teenager. I know you guys aren't teenagers. We have some teenagers that will be watching the recording. Um, she started painting as a teenager. So she started young and she painted until she was almost a hundred years old. So that was a long time. Oh, Lily got her, her dog. Is that a dog? Yep, the gigantic dog. He's almost as big as you. <laughs> So um, Georgia studied with lots of other artists to learn their styles on how to paint. And she was an American painter. Now we studied artists that were in Italy and France and other countries, right? Well, Georgia studied, she's, she's American. She studied here in America. Um, and she also, painted in a movement called precisionism. That's a big word, precisionism. Um, that's using smooth, sharply defined lines when she's painting. So we'll see that in just a moment. Um, she's best known, I think I mentioned earlier, um, for painting big, big scale flowers. She also liked to paint skyscrapers. Um, landscapes in the desert and animal bones. Animal bones, huh? Interesting, right? Um, she painted bright, vibrant, colorful things that glowed with energy. And I told you about her vision, that she lost her vision about 12 to 15 years before she passed away. And some things that she liked to paint with. So she painted watercolors she used pastels has anybody have you guys tried pastels before it's like chalk it's like oily chalk so if you get a chance sometime um ask your parents if you can try chalk it can be a little messy though you can really get all over your fingers 
Um, also, she is, you do, you have them. They're kind of fun, aren't they? It's like chalk art. It's kind of like chalk art. And um, with your parents, okay, you should, you guys should get that out and try that sometime. Um, so she also used pencil and charcoal to draw with. Oh, yes, you do have some fun. Oh, on the black paper. Oh, that's super cool. Oh, wow. You know what that looks like? And it almost looks like fireworks in a night sky or some constellations. Oh, nice. It is all about space. Space. I knew it. I knew it. It looked like space. Those are really cool. I like the black paper. Painting, painting, and um, you can buy black canvases to paint on. Neon colors look really cool on a black paper or black canvases. So those are some things that she did. Now I'm going to hop over to where I saved her pictures. If I can find it quick here. Open up. Open up. Um, I think they are in this file. I just want to show you some of the things. I should have been doing this all along, but I didn't. Um, I want to just want to show you on here some things that she painted. So I told you she liked to paint animal bones, right? There's a skull of, I think, a cow. Probably a cow, because you can see those horns. And she, I don't know this, and she painted lots of flowers. See those nice, smooth lines that she painted? That is her style. And here's another flower over here. So those are three things that she painted. And let me go over to. Uh, doo -doo -doo. That was yes. not a cow. It was a, a different animal in the um, back in the day. You think so? It wasn't a cow. It wasn't? I'm not sure if it was. It had a long face. It wasn't and a cow, really. I, no. I learned something about that animal, but maybe next time I see you, I can tell you it. Yes, that would be great. I would love to. Oh, there they are. Whoops. Ah. <gasps> There's Tino and Rosalie. Yay. <laughs> it is amazing, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, I got a couple messages that people let me tell them they can watch the recording. And yeah. Okay. Oh, and Maria's kids aren't here, are they? She was planning on it too. Da, da, da. Let me find Maria. Hi, hi, hi. There she is. Art class. Okay. All right, back here. So here's another painting that Georgia O'Keeffe painted. Tino Rosalie, we are talking about Georgia O'Keeffe today, well, this month. Um, we did a little practice drawing that wasn't related to Georgia O'Keeffe, and um, but we did some exercises, and I will send the recording off um, later this afternoon so your parents can show you how to get into that, and you can watch it on my YouTube channel, okay? Um, so you can get some practice drawing. Right now we're just talking about Georgia O'Keeffe and showing some of the paintings that she created in her almost 100 years of painting and creating. Um, we talked about the animal bones that she'd like to paint. Um, here's a couple flowers. I'll hold this up again so you two can see. These are a couple, some of the things that she liked to paint. She also liked to paint flowers close up, like in a large scale. And she also liked to paint cityscapes, so like skyscrapers in New York City. And here's the second flower. Um, here's another one of those long 
horned um, cattle that she liked to paint. So you can see there's not only the animal bones, but she put a flower there because she liked to paint flowers. She always threw a flower in. And then the landscape of New Mexico where she lived. And then the last one to show you, whoops, it's a different file. The poppy that we're going to paint, I know you have a picture of it, um, but let me jump over to that. Do, do, do. Where'd it go? Here it is. And here's poppy. It is the red poppy is what it's called. And that's what we're going to paint next time. All right. In the meantime, we are going to practice some step-by-step -step flowers. All righty. So Tina Rosalie, if you have your journal out, let's go over to that. And we're going to practice a couple things. Also, Tina Rosalie, if you have color pencils or crayons or markers, um, anything like that to make some color on your drawings, go grab those, okay? You don't have to, but you have, if you have them handy, go ahead and grab those. Um, <clears throat> we're going to draw, let me get my other paper out, just some simple line art flowers, all right? And I don't think we've created too many flowers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's cute, Lily. Um, we spent one time, let's see, when we were studying Bob Ross, we practiced lots of different trees, didn't we? So today we're going to practice some flowers, a few different kinds of flowers. I'm going to teach you step by step how to do that. And we're going to start with just some simple daisy type flowers, all right? And I'm not showing you the picture. You can just follow me on here. I'll make them a little bit bigger. In fact, I'm going to use my big Sharpie so you can see a little better. All right, so does everybody know what a daisy looks like? They have a yellow center. They have long petals. You don't, Tina? Okay, then good, because I can show you right now. All right, so a daisy normally has a round center. So make a you know round. How the I know how to draw daisies. All too. right, then you can go ahead and do it. So they have a round center. So make a circle for the center. And daisies have long, narrow petals, and they're rounded on the ends. So we're just going to make one, two, about six rounded petals, OK? Three, four. I'm going to make more than six. <laughs> I made mine too narrow. One, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, seven, eight. So there's eight petals. And now I'm going to make some petals. So this makes it more of a folk art kind of a flower. So we're going to add petals on the outside. All right. Bigger petals. So kind of behind those petals. Let me bring it up close so you can see. So we're gonna make petals behind these other petals. So let's do that one. They're connected. So there's a petal there. So this is kind of a two level flower. It has petals in the front and petals in the back. And it just makes it fuller. If we color them, you can use a different color for the back petals if you like. And I'm just kind of filling in humps for petals behind the first ones like that. Now we have a very full flower. All right. And how about we need a stem? Flowers need stems, don't they? So let's try that. What do you have yours done, Lily? You're always yep. so fast. Very nice. Oh, good job. Those are lovely flowers. Yep. So I'm going to make a stem, not too, too wide, and some leaves. How about throw some leaves on there? There's a leaf there. Let's do three leaves. One, 
two, three. And a leaf is kind of, you can make a teardrop shape. Do you remember when we practiced teardrop shapes? <laughs> um, we can even put a middle vein in the center of that leaf like that. All right, here's what I have so far. Now I'm going to create grass for this flower to sit in. Kind of humpy, lumpy. Like that, okay? So I have the our flower growing in the grass. And I'm gonna make two other flowers in here. Let's see, how about a regular daisy? If you wanna color this flower, some other color besides white, go ahead. I'm gonna make a smaller daisy down here that is just a daisy. So here's a stem and I'm gonna put a center right here and we'll make some, just one set of petals on this flower. Now, you know, flowers come in lots of different colors and shapes and sizes and do you see what color our poppy is going to be that we paint? What color is that? You guys can unmute and tell me. What color is that poppy that I gave you the picture of? Is it red? It's in your kit. Yep. Yep. That poppy is red. What do you know about the red poppy? Do you know much about the red poppy? Did you know that that is California's state flower? It is. Yep. Yep. I love poppies. I love the shape. In fact, I have a painting, not that I did, but I have a painting over on my wall of three different colored poppies. So I like poppies. In fact, I bought some seeds a few weeks ago to plant and grow my own poppies, my own California poppies. So we've got just one kind of, uh, just a general flower here with petals. Then we have a little daisy down here. We're gonna do one other flower here. This one will look a little bit different. We're gonna look at it kind of from the side view. So follow along with me here. So I'm gonna start out with kind of a cup shape. All right, almost a half moon. And then we're gonna throw in petals only on the flat side. So this is just looking at a flower from a different angle, like some of the things we've been drawing. Some people drew cups from the side view. Some people drew cups from looking down on it. While this flower, we're looking from the side view. So I'm just doing the same kind of petals we did before and just putting petals on this flat side, looking at the flower from the side view, okay? So it has this part, this is kind of what connects the, um, the stem to the petals. And we'll bring that stem down into the grass because they have to be growing in the grass, right? And let's make a couple petal, um, leaves on it with pointy, ends instead of rounded like that one. That's a different way to make a petal or a, a leaf, sorry. I'm going to make another pointed leaf up here. It's pointed at the stem and at the end. So there's three different kinds of flowers we have here and two different kinds of leaves. I'll put a, the vein on the leaf here. All right, so go ahead and if you want to color those in with your pencils or markers or crayons, go ahead and color that in quick. Let's see, do, 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 do. I had a message, oh, okay. All righty. So while you're coloring that in, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk Coloring. About you got it? Oh, nice. Ooh, pretty. This one is really pretty. Yeah. Pretty. Yellow. And and Very nice. Good job. What do you have? Let me show me yours, Ken. 
and Zach. Oh, there's a nice flower. Oh, you drew it in red. Very good. <laughs> That's so close, Lily. <laughs> and Tina Rosalie, are you working on your flowers? Show me when you get all done, okay? All righty, good, good. You're working on it. Oh, where did we lose Rosalie to? Oh, there she is. Yay, you're back. Let me see. Oh, good. Very good job. Yay, I'm glad everyone's working so hard. Okay. So now let's, I've got about 15, 20 minutes left. Let's practice. Let's see. I've got some other ideas. Two other flowers we're going to practice with, okay? And I think I'll fold my paper over. No, maybe not. Let me use a fresh piece of paper. My Sharpie goes right through. So I don't want to see those lines through there. Okay, so let's. We are going to practice a rose. I think most of you have probably seen a rose before. And we're going to show you step by step how to make one. All right, a drawn. I know, I know what a rose looks like. Do was. you? Oh, good. Well, you're one step ahead of everyone. Even a lily. Even a lily. I bet you do know. And you know something I was going to mention, Lily, is Georgia O'Keeffe painted lots and lots of lilies. Your namesake. She painted so many lilies but huge ones right up close. All right, so for a rose, we're gonna start with an oval shape, okay? I'm gonna do half, kind of like um, one side of your journal. So I'm gonna do half my page here. So at the top, we're gonna start with an oval shape, all right? Start with an oval like that. All right, and then we're going to draw a line down on each side. Can you do that? Let me put it up close so you can see. I know it's, I can't get my camera to be too close or it gets all blurry. So we have an oval and then two lines coming down from the oval. All right, now let's create in front of these lines, we're gonna make a wavy line like that. Can you do that? Just do your best. This is gonna be your own version of a rose. And then this is the front petal. So then we're gonna, from here, we're gonna come around to make a wide, wavy line that meets this wavy line. All right, let me put it up close for you. All right, so we have the top of the rose and one of the petals of the rose. All right, and then we will create the rest of the front. Let's just come around here like that. We're gonna close in that part. Oh, did you miss part of it, Kian? All right, so we have an oval. We've got a short line down Another line down around and two wavy lines that almost looks like a leaf that we made a minute ago. All right. And next we will create a petal in the back. So this kind of makes a triangle shape. Can you make a triangle shape on that side? Yeah. Okay. And then we have to make, so with a rose, when you go in towards the center of a rose, when it's still kind of closed up, it looks like a swirl. So we're gonna create that swirl, all right? So on the bottom of your oval up here, we're going to go and make kind of a loop like that, kind of a curly cue. Can you do that? 
And those are the petals on the inside of the rose that are all folded up tight still. When it finally opens up, then it all opens up and all the petals spread out. Right now we're paint or drawing a closed up rose. All right, so we've got that loop in the center. Now I'm gonna bring a little line down. So I just kind of closed off this loop. Let me get, there we go. I just brought a line down right here. So there's the blossom of our rose. We're going to do, so when a rose bud is growing, it has green on the outside of the colored part of the rose, right? Of the petals, it has green leaves that kind of encompass or kind of cover up the petals. When the rose starts opening up, those little leaves kind of hang outward where the stem starts. So we're gonna make those kind of curved, three curved triangle shapes. I'm already done. You're done? All right, let me see. Very good, my dear. Oh, and colored, and it's soaking up the sunshine. Wonderful. I put wind in there. You did? All right. You know what? I'm going to call these little leaves on the bottom of the rosebud shark fins. <laughs> I think everybody can make sharp fins, right? <laughs> All right. So those are underneath our rosebud here. And we're gonna make a stem with some leaves. So our stem is just going to be a curved line here, curved line here. And then every rose needs thorns, right? That's the one, the one hard part about a beautiful rose, they have really sharp thorns. So we're gonna make those same little shark fins for thorns on our stem, all right? Like that. Let me bring it up close. See my little thorns that look like shark fins? <laughs> and then I'm going to make two leaves and they're gonna be pointy on both ends. So it looks like an, the shape of an eye or the shape of an almond. And it's pointed at the top and the bottom. And you can put the vein. So you know the parts of leaves have the veins that take all the nutrients to the outside of the leaf, right? We call those veins. <clears throat> and you can make two veins or make a vein in each leaf like that. So you can color that if you'd like. Go ahead and color your rose any color you like. <clears throat> and Another flower we're going to practice is a daffodil. So we've practiced some daisies. We've practiced a rose now. We practiced um, kind of the side view of a daisy. And then this other, I think you could probably call this other one a mum because mums have lots and lots of layers of these kind of shaped petals. Um, you can even create more. While you guys are finishing up, I'm gonna make some more um, petals on this one. With flowers, you can really make any kind of shape and design you want. Sadie, where are you? That silly dog barks at every little sound. So this is just making a fuller. My dog that, my dog barks at sometimes Humans that we know, sometimes humans that we don't. Yep, same as like my a little watch, dog. Like a watchdog. Yep, my little dog. She only she's only like eight or nine pounds, but she thinks she's big. She thinks she's a big watchdog. <laughs> so there, I filled in. I made that almost like a carnation. Carnations are nice and full as well. All right, let's try. We got time for a daffodil. I'm going to turn it over. And draw on this side. Well, now yeah, no, I'll just do it on the other side of my rose. All right, so a daffodil is usually yellow. I think I've seen some white daffodils. 
but they they almost look like a trumpet. Do you know what a trumpet is? It's a musical instrument that has a spout that sticks out. Yes, okay, Lily knows. So they kind of look like a trumpet and then they have flat petals on the back. So they have the flat back and then they have a trumpet sticking out. Let me get in the correct camera here. So they have a trumpet petal sticking out and then flat petals in the back. So that's what we're going to draw next here. And this is gonna start with a circle shape as well. All right, a lot of, most flowers have a circle shape in them somewhere. We're going to start with a circle, like towards the top of your journal, like that, all right? So we'll start with a circle. And then with that circle, we're going to make it bumpy. So can you make some bumpy lines? You can bumpy or wavy. Can you do that? All righty. Yes, good. All right, so we made that circle bumpy all the way around. And then we're going to create that trumpet shape that I told you about. So it makes these petals kind of stick out. So we make kind of a smile. So from on the side of your daffodil, of the, that oval, let's make a U shape, a big U shape, okay? And then we're going to start creating those flat petals that are in the back of the flower. So the first one we're gonna start, and it's gonna take up this whole space right here. I think you can see. And it's gonna be pointed at the top. Okay, so there's one petal. And then the next one like that, pointed at the end. And these are all kind of the same size. So try to make them the similar in size. And then a third one right here. And then we're gonna do three more, okay? So we're, we're looking at this flower at an angle a little bit. And on the outside of the bumpy circle that we made, we're going to have a little bit of a petal sticking out there. Okay, so let's make a pointed petal sticking out from that side from behind that center. And then let's put between these two petals, we'll put, oh, let me see. Oh, nice. So oh, very cute, Rosalie. Let's see, we'll put a petal between these two like that, and a petal between these two towards the bottom. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six petals, and then the center area, okay? Now, let me see here. Most flowers should have a stamen it's in the very center of the petals of the flower. Some flowers you'll, you have that. Some flowers you'll see it almost looks like a stick sticking out. Oh, very good. Yes, very nice. Pretty, pretty colors too. <laughs> All right, so this daffodil has a stamen that sticks out and it's gonna be in the center area, okay? So in this, the bumpy, oval we made. We're going to make a long, two long lines. Okay. Let me, let's see. I'll draw it and then I will show you. We have this circle. So we call that the stamen. All right. Two lines and a circle. And then let's see here. We'll create kind of a smile. So it looks like this that stamen is going into the center of the petals there. Okay, make kind of a smile at the end of those lines. 
it kind of gives it dimension. It gives it a little bit of dimension so it doesn't look so flat. All right, next, we're almost done here. We're gonna put some lines in our petals that looks like they kind of fold, you know, some flowers at the center, the petals have some lines or they have some folds or some um, little bit darker colors. We're gonna kind of create that with three lines on each petal. So towards the center here, let's put three lines on that petal and they're kind of close together. You can make those lines kind of close together. This petal will put one line this one will have three lines. This one we can have a, some lines there, probably one line for that petal. And we don't need a line on this one because those little creases in the center show that it's just closer together. And this one is, we can't see the center. And then let's see here. I think that's about yeah. all. Yeah. Then. Nice. Oh, good job, Lily. Great. Okay, and then we will do a stem. So let's make two lines for a stem for this flower. And then now um, daffodils have long, narrow leaves. So we're gonna create, instead of little le short leaves like we have here, let's create a long leaf for this one. So this daffodil will start a leaf way down here. And it's gonna go past our stem into a point and then this leaf comes down to a point all right long leaves for this flower and then we'll make that stem come down here and let's make a second leaf on this side and this will put kind of behind it goes behind the front leaf all right so you've got your stem and two leaves. And then let's just have this flower growing in some more grass and you can color in your grass if you like. So let's make some jagged looking lines for some grass. You can color that green. Um, you wanna make some clouds in the sky? How about some clouds? This is kind of a fun cartoony way to make some clouds. I'm going to do two. How about one over here? Right off the edge of my paper. What do you think? Everybody get their daffodil drawn. Kind of interesting, huh? All right, so that is all I have for this class. I'm gonna do something else for the teenagers um, in a moment, in a little bit here, but next time be ready to paint that red poppy, okay? Oh, well, there's Kian. Let me see, Kian and Zach's. Oh, very good job. A rose and a daffodil and daisies. Very good, guys. Thank you for showing me, awesome. Great job. Thank you for participating today. And we will be painting a red poppy next time. All right, in two weeks. Uh, All right, we will see you in two weeks. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining me. And Tino and Rosalie, if you want to see the beginning of the um, what we did for the drawing exercises, have your mom look for the email or your dad look for the email and I will be sending that out today. Okay. Cool. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Bye. <laughs> Apple slices. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Oh, this? Yeah. See you, Kian. See you later, bud. All right, and for my two teenagers, thank you for hanging on here. Looks like the littles are gone. We are going to draw one of the, one of Georgia O'Keeffe's specialties. She does, she paints and draws a whole lot of calla lilies. 
And what we're going to do today is here's a sneak peek. We're going to draw this today. All right. This will be really good practice for you. I know you love drawing anyways. So we're going to practice and I'm just going to kind of freehand it. Um, I am going to use my pencil. Hope I have a sharper pencil. Let me go grab my other pencil. One moment. And if you feel you need to erase, feel free. Um, but don't feel like you need to. Kind of why we have drawing pencils with no eraser. We are just going to tackle it and do this. So um, I think calories are one of my favorite flowers to draw. I'm going to fold my paper in half. If you're doing this in your journal, you can either use the open up so you have two pages and you can do it all on um, using the both pages like that or you can just do one side and whichever it'll probably be a little faster if you just do um, one page of your journal and i'm going to begin with all right so i'm going to start with some basic shapes and i'm always um, encouraging you guys to when you see items and shapes that um, kind of be aware of the basic shape of things. So if you see, let's say a framed picture, um, that's usually a rectangle, right? Rectangle or a square shape. Um, a book is a rectangle, square shape, um, flowers, have a variety of shapes and you'll see a few um well the ones that we drew earlier and then these cow lilies as well they're all a little bit different um a glass is a cylinder shape so it's got round on the top and the bottom depending on the angle that you're drawing um you'll capture some of that round shape so let's look at cow lilies what i like about cow lilies is their um smooth gentle form they usually have i think it's just one big petal that kind of curves around and um, folds over itself and there are lots of different kinds of cow lilies actually um, i had cow lilies in my wedding i even found silverware and plates and um, glasses that had the cow lily shape so I really, really like the cow lily. I'm going to start in the top corner. I think you can see my paper. Okay. So I'm going to stop, start in the top corner here. And this cow lily, um, I don't know if it would help to have it in front of you. I'll put it here. I think it'll help you. So we're going to do this one right here. So I'm going to first create the petal. So it starts in the center and we're going to come out. It's a little bit of a wavy line and it'll come to the point here because at the very end, the widest part of the, um, the Calilly petal at the very tip, it comes to a point. So here's that tip and we'll kind of make a curvy line that comes around and it comes into the fold here. We're going to also, let's see, let's bring this petal around creating the center of our cow lily. And then most flowers to some degree have a center. So the stamen of this one looks like that. And let me bring it up close. All right. So there's a first one. And we are going to add, we're going to get the line drawing in first and then we'll go in and shade. Okay. This might, I was, I told your mom it might only be like 15 minutes. It's going to be longer, um, but that should be okay. Um, probably closer to 30 minutes. So now I'm going to create the bell part um, of the cow lily. So under here, Let's, it's kind of rounded the bottom and 
and goes outward towards the top and when it gets up to the the wider part of the petals here so that and then we've got the stem that is coming down like that all right and then let's do the other one here so i'm going to start this one right here just going with the amount of space i've got i'll make these calories a little bit closer so i'm going to start on the bottom of this one and then so like we did here this comes around up here kind of making that bell shape again like we did here and then the petal kind of starts a little bit on the side it's a little bit wavy and part of it goes here and this is where the petal folds within itself we're going to do the outside edge so this is a little bit wider here and this is the part of the petal that it kind of rolls outward that's why it looks it's got like a two dimensions here so this is the top edge so this is going to come around like so and it's wavy again gentle smooth waves george o'keefe painted and draw, drew with a nice gentle smooth lines so this cat lily is going to come over here kind of to the edge of our paper and it's going to come down and around into a point and i'm going to bring this line i want to make sure i create this folded front part of the petal so i'm going to after I got the point here, you see that? I'm going to come up a little bit and create the part of the petal that is folded over and then it comes in to fold into the other side of the petal. All right. And this we will bring around here. All right, so this is where the petal is going inward to the center. And then, of course, we need another stamen. And we will be shading this in, too. And I hope to um, see it next time. I hope you can keep your journal handy so you can show me next time. Um, got that, that. And the shading part will be a lot of fun. Let's just get the basic shape down though. All right, so we've got a stem. This stem is going to curve slightly and it's going to go behind the other. And we'll worry about leaves in a moment. Let's get the stuff that's in the background first. So we've got these two calories that are kind of in the background. I'm going to make a leaf coming up between these two lilies. So this leaf slightly wavy again, but nice, gentle, smooth lines comes to a point and then slightly wavy. We're going to stop it right about there because it looks like that leaf is kind of be behind this cowley. So now we're moving towards the foreground. So this cowley is more in the front and let's start creating that. I'm going to start with the back portion of the petal here, gentle waves as you kind of make a circular shape all the way around. And again, this lily is kind of sitting in front of this leaf. So it's going to bring the inner part of the lily there and create our make sure i get the direction because you kind of want the direction of the stamen to be the same as your stem i think i'm going to make the rest of my lily before i create the stamen 
All right, so now I've got this general direction going. And this stem will come in front as well. And so the stem is this way. Our stamen is going to be this way. All right, so there's three calla lilies. And then let's finish our leaf. And you can't see this part because it's behind the lily, right? But we can draw some veins. And the veins kind of come off sort of a main vein. You can just draw some light veins in that leaf. And I don't care that I have these intersecting lines right here. Let me bring it up close quick. We're going to be filling this in with some pencil lines, so don't worry about that. And let's make one more leaf here. I didn't think the little kids would be into spending this much time. I think they had fun just doing the, the simpler flowers. So I hope you'll go back and um, work on those as well. All right, so this leaf is bent. We're going to show a folded leaf. And I'm just tracing not tracing. I'm drawing the outside shape of it, just the general shape. It comes to a point, it kind of curves. Because it's bended over, I've got a curved shape going here where it curves back into the straight part. And this side of the leaf is going to kind of come in. And it creates a stem like so. This one is coming behind it and will create a stem as well there. So let's see, we've got this stem, this Kelly. This Kelly needs a stem that goes behind like this here. And that's off to this side a little bit. So there's a stem. Here's a leaf and a stem. Here's a cal uh, another leaf and a stem. Calily and a stem. We only have two leaves here. All right, so let's start with some shading here. And that's the, my favorite part. I haven't actually sat and drawn um, to show shading in a drawing in a long, long, long time. I'm thinking, gosh, maybe over a year. I do sketches when I'm going to create a painting, but I don't ever go this in depth because it's kind of wasted if you're going to cover it up with paint. Um, so to show shading is showing where there is less light, right? So when you look at this drawing, and I'll hold this up close too. This drawing is not my drawing. Um, I got it off the internet. Um, the darker areas that we can use, like this kind of the side of your pencil, um, the darker areas show shading, so where it's usually going away from you, all right, where there is less light. If your light source is coming from the top here, down, whatever is folded and going away from you is going to have less light. So I'm going to recreate that. I'm going to start with, let's start with this lily right here. So I'm going to do, and if you like to blend with your fingers or like tissue, um, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just looking. Now it's probably better to practice this looking at actual cattle lilies, but since um, I really didn't want to go buy cattle lilies, I'll probably just be spending the money to kill it. <laughs> but let's just go from this drawing. We're going to just make it a little darker here. And I can even, I will message um, a draw the a picture of this to your mom, okay? So you can have that, um, something closer up to use. And you can put that on your tablet, whatever device you're using. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit wider down here. And like I said, if you want to blend it with your fingers or um, a tissue or something, I'm making it darker onto this point here. All right, 
straight down to the point. And you want to keep the light area kind of rounded here, all right? So this is going to be shaded to kind of look like it is curving downward. I've got a little bit of shading all right to about here. And then a little more shading starting back over here. Let's just give it a little more depth on this side. And then a little more at this point up here. So we, since it's kind of turning in towards the center, it's definitely not going to have a lot of light down there. Let's create some shadow here, as well as along this line. And then the stamen is darkest on one side because of our light source again everything has everything to do with the light source or that light sources so i'm making more of a shadow a heavier shadow on the stamen here i kind of want that little shape to pop and i'm going to make it real lightly shaded on the left side i want to leave it light on the front here, I'll bring that up close for you. See how I did that? A wider, wider shading on the right side. And then we can show some kind of grooves in the petal itself. With the real light shading, but the direction is going upward from that center, from that stamen outward. And we'll show a little shading on this side. And then again, more shading as you go down towards the center of this flower. So where there's less light going down inside there where those petals are curled up tight, you don't have a lot of light. So that is going to appear darker. I'm gonna bring that all the way down there. And I'm gonna even do a little bit lighter shading on the stamen, just leaving a little light, light area on the left there. I don't know if you can see that. So just kind of have fun with that, with that shading. And you'll, I'll, I'll get you that picture this picture, I'll send a copy of that so you can see it closer. I'm going to make it darker for this spot. Um, all right, let's put some shading, darker shading up against the petal. So the, I'm going to make it darker here. And I know you guys draw a lot, so you know how you can press harder to make the, um, the graphite darker and then press lighter, be more gentle, and you'll have a lighter shade. So I'm going to bring this all the way around, pretty heavy, pretty dark, um, to really let this top part of the petal stand out. I'm going to kind of bring this darker to a point here and then back up. And then this area is darker as well. And then it's a little bit darker because it's rounded. These, um, this part of the petal that's closer to the stem and connecting to the stem is rounded. We can show roundness in drawing, you know that, right? With shading. So creating a 
light area and some curved shading helps the eye think that it is rounded. And so I'm going to make it a little bit darker because, again, your light source is here. So you're going around to the outside in the back of this rounded part of the flower. You're going to have less light back here. So we're going to make that a little darker there as well as this side. Like so. Okay. And then let's continue on with our stem. Again, that's rounded. Stems are rounded, so there's going to be more shadow on the sides of the stem than it is right in front. How are we on time? All right. So I probably won't totally finish this on here. Um, but I'd love to see what you finish up yourself, OK? So let's see, my leaf is going to come in front of that one here. Let me put a little bit of shadowing. I think this, since calories are often light colored, white or yellow, pale yellow, um, the blossom part is lighter than this area. So from the bottom of the blossom to the stem is going to usually green. So it's going to be a darker shade. So I'm going to create that a little bit darker. Now let's go over to this one and just create some shading. It doesn't really matter what direction you make your shading. Um, I'm just kind of going all in, uh, in the same direction. And that's going to be lighter along this edge of the petal. Make it a little bit lighter here, as well as this area where it goes inward. A little bit of shading here. But I'm going to really let it pop when I put shading here. So this is going to be darker like we did down here. And if you have time to look up Georgia O'Keeffe paintings, um, do a search of her calla lilies, Georgia O'Keeffe lilies or calla lilies. You can see a ton of them, really pretty. So I'm gonna bring the shading along this edge because we want this edge lighter. So that edge really pops. And then I'm gonna leave kind of a, almost a seam. I want it to be a little bit light right through here, coming through, because you can see where the petals kind of um, separate here. And then this will be a little bit lighter shading, because we've got light on the front of it, with the edge slightly shaded darker. So again, the bottom, like we did here, is going to have more shading, because it's a darker green. And let's bring some dark shading on this side. I'm leaving just a vein, a strip of white right down here, OK? And you can see it better in a moment when I get this finished. So fill this in. And this one will have more shading on the side here. <clears throat> I hope you can't hear my 11 year old. He's <laughs> playing a game or something, laughing, being very loud. I don't know that you can hear that on here, though. I hope not. Sounds like he's having way too much fun. He should be doing his schoolwork. <laughs> All right. So, bringing some shading like we did here as well. They kind of meet, it's a little darker. And they kind of meet to show that roundness again. And it'll be a little lighter here as we make it a little darker on the edge. OK. Let's blend this in a little bit, get more of a medium 
tone of shading here. You can leave a little bit of it lighter like we did there with that light shining right there. Okay, and then the flower. Let's get some shading on the top part. And up here, and I'm going to blend those lines a little bit more. I don't usually like to see the edge, the line of the drawing after I get done with the shading. I like the edge to blend in with my shading or even lighten up where um, this line is. I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. I don't have, I just have the plain paper background, so it's not like I have a color to kind of differentiate from this petal, from the background. But I don't, I just don't like to see these straight lines. So I'm gonna kind of blend in the straight lines with the edge and the inside part of the petal. And it's going to be darker as we go down towards this point. So I'll go ahead and make kind of the same amount of shading all around this edge here. Just kind of fill that in and then we'll blend it in a moment. And the underneath part that we're seeing is much darker more like this darker shade down here. So let's fill that in, kind of going in the same direction with your pencil. And leave a little bit of it lighter in the middle here. And All right, I'm going to blend this a little bit more. And this side. All right, so now let's create some shading on the center of our flower. So I'm going to fill that in, not super, super dark. Let's just kind of go medium here. And it carries over behind the stamen. And it goes right into the curve. So let's just bring this shading right to the point here and just kind of blend it out a little bit. And let's give some dimension to our stamen. So it's going to have a little bit of darkness already with the line. I'm going to use that for the darkness and I'm going to make it darker on the right side like we did the other one. Like that, Hold that up close. Okay. And then we need a little bit of, um, oh, just more um, like we did here. See how we created some lines in the petal. Let's do that on this other one quick. And I'm just making some lines coming up, kind of blended in, going with the direction of the curve of this petal as it kind of goes into this crease like that. All right, and we've got another stem and making it darker on the sides and then lightly blending in the center area to show that dimension of a round stem. Bring that down here as well. And I'm just going to do this lily since we're doing lilies. Let's finish up this lily and then we'll create our, fill in our leaves and call it done. So 
So I'm making a little bit of shading on the edges here. You know what? Your mom would probably love this for Mother's Day. Just a hint. Just a little suggestion. All right. Making a little shading all the way around this lily. I'm going to bring my lines kind of sort of towards the center, if that makes sense. I want to kind of cover up that outline line a little bit. I don't want to see the outline so much. And this one's going to go all the way around. It's a little bit lighter on this side since we've got white paper. We want some contrast between the paper and the, you know, the background and the, the petal. Um, we've got a lot of pencil drawings in here in the flower. So let's make this a little bit lighter. Okay. So a little lighter shading on this side of the petal. We don't need as much contrast with the dark. We need more lighter contrast. And that's going to carry it all the way over. Let's see, it's going to be a little wider here, and then, then it thins out there. And I'm going to start with some shading on the inner area of this lily. And it kind of goes right up to this. So and I'll bring that up close in a moment. Because generally, um, I don't know, you're going to see this shape. It kind of just goes outward. So that's why I'm making these lines kind of go from the center out, if that makes sense. And I've got some softer lines, some heavier lines. And I'm going to make it the stamen darker on the right side. I did on the other ones. And there's some shading here. Right to this fold. And over here, I'm going to have less shadowing there. All right, let's finish the bottom part. How are we on time? Not too, too bad. Yeah, it was I figured you didn't need a whole separate class. I wasn't sure if you guys were going to be in class or not. So that's why I figured if we just stayed after, then I'll just record one, one class of drawing. And then next time we will all paint at 10 o'clock as well. And I'll try to send out a reminder to your mom beforehand instead of right when we're starting class. I know she often works on Friday. All right, so making this bottom part that is generally um, turning green. The lily might be white or yellow, but it will turn green going in towards the stem. So that's why it's going to be a little darker pigmented than the rest of the lily. So that's why it's a, we'll, we're shade, shading a little darker. And again, we're going to have show roundness by leaving some white area and kind of a rounded general section here and then a little bit of reflection on the edge here. We've got the line but we also have a light area right inside of the edge showing a reflection, a lighted area, something that's reflecting either from the table or something here. And I'm just bringing some lines upward, downward, So we've got a little highlight here and here. And like I like to do is kind of get rid of that hard edge. All right, and then make our stem. And this stem is going behind, let's see, this leaf. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up to here and then pick it up over here. And do 
a little bit of shading on that stem. And the leaves are darker. They're going to be darker, quite a bit darker than the um, lilies. They're a darker green. I'm going to erase some of the line that I did on the other stem. I want to sketch in the shape that this leaf is growing. So you've got the veins and we didn't draw the veins on the other leaf yet, but we've got the veins going this direction. So we're going to make our um, strokes going in this direction. And it can be almost like hairs, almost like the teeth of a comb, just going outward from this kind of a imaginary center line. I've got the center line here um, from the veins that I drew. I'm going to use that and go outward because that's just kind of how leaves look. And I'm going to make it even darker when I shade. So we want to have a really nice contrast and a shadowing of the lily on the leaf. So let's make it really dark up next to the edge of the lily, all the way down. I'll bring that up close. See how I'm making it darker on top of the leaf? It's the shadow from the lily. And it's kind of wide, so I'm going to make it pretty dark and a little wider here. And that stem comes all the way down. It's going to go behind this leaf. I'm going to make the stem darker behind this leaf here, like so. And I'm going to press harder so I can get a nice dark leaf going. You can leave some of the kind of the veins, you can leave them kind of dark, or I mean light. So you have a nice little variety. You've got some depth with the leaf. You've got some highlights kind of where the veins are. <clears throat> and we're going to blend in the shadowing as well. So I'm going to make create a shadow on this side of the leaf to account for the shadow of this lily here. And then it will lighten up as we go further away from the lily. I still want this leaf darker. <clears throat> it's actually kind of nice drawing today. I don't usually sit and just draw. So thank you for being in class and participating. It forces me to do some work myself. I often get caught up in teaching stuff and looking for material to teach that takes me away from doing art myself. So this is a lot of fun. And I'm glad you guys are up for it. All right, so there's a darker leaf for you. And again, I'm gonna kind of blend in that line I made, the outside line. Try to cover that, blend that in a little bit. All right, and <clears throat> let's just finish up this leaf and we'll be done. If you wanna make this a little darker, you can for a little more contrast. <clears throat> All right, so this leaf is shaded. Um, more underneath and the edges. Because it is folded over, let's make it dark underneath. And we've got this vein. Let's use this vein for a real visual. It goes up the center of the leaf, right? And then we'll have from the center on the outside where it's folded, it kind of comes over to the point. Um, if you want to put some lines in to guide your eye to the length of the sleeve. You can bring a line in like that. There's nothing wrong with that. One moment, kids are home from school. Okay, I'm back. 
So making it darker underneath where it's folded and it going with the grain of this leaf as well. Like we did over here. <clears throat> and this deeper vein is going to be darker. I want it to kind of highlight the um, the vein that goes into the stem, let's kind of highlight that, leave it lighter. And we've got a shadow of the leaf. How it's folded over is going to be the darkest part. So let's make this darker here. where the fold is, and then down here, just a little bit lighter. <laughs> Crazy dog again. Okay, I'm gonna blend that line in again, because you know how I don't like these lines. And down here. Uh, Actually, yeah, this leaf is coming in front of this other calla lily. So let's make the stem come all the way down like that. I've got those stems, finish. I'm gonna finish this stem from this lily. It's kind of a tangled, tangled web of stems, isn't it? And making that a little bit darker for the green stem. All right, and then let's finish this leaf and we'll be done for today. So I'm gonna blend in that line again and create shadow on the top here. As it bends over, you're gonna have less light to the right where the bend is. So that will be shadowed and shaded. Will you unlock the slider, please? I don't know if it is. And then it'll be shaded a little darker on the edge here as we go into the point of the leaf and I'll bring this up for you to see in a moment because again the point of the leaf is turning away from us so it's getting more shadow there as well and just kind of creating the the green or the veins of the leaf as I make these lines here. And then there's a little bit of a highlight to differentiate this leaf from the top of the leaf from the underside. So I'm gonna make a little bit of the space. I don't know if you can see, I have a little bit of a white line here. You'll see it better when I finish shading. So let's get the inside curved edge of the leaf shaded in. <clears throat> I might erase a little bit of this pencil line to create more of a shine so you can see the edge of the leaf a little better. Um, ah! I can make it darker. That will help here. And it's got some kind of grooves so you can kind of create some grooves of the veins of the leaf. And let's finish filling in this leaf. I'll be all done. <clears throat> let's see, it's going to go over. Yeah, the top.
top of the leaf here is smoother than the underneath. So. You'll see lots of veiny lines on the underside, like on this leaf, and then this one has less. Just kind of shading into these lines here, like that. Um, you can make some veins go through here. Here. And I said I wanted to have a little more highlighting on this edge of the leaf that folds over. <clears throat> so I'm just going to darken where it comes over. All right, and I'll show you up close. You can see the shadows and how the where this leaf turns over, you've got the shadow underneath. So and I think we have stems to match up to everything. There's a flower stem, flower stem, flower stem, leaf, leaf. So there are your three calla leaves, Georgia O'Keeffe style. I'll get a picture and send that with the um, link into um, the recording and your mom will have that so you can get that up on your devices. All right. So thank you for drawing with me today and I will catch you in a couple of weeks to paint.